Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome video on the Brugger Film channel. Today we're going to dive into the tragic events that caused the implosion of the submersible Titan. Who were the crew members? How much does a trip like this actually cost? What might have caused this implosion and so much more? If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, smash the like and don't forget to share our videos with your friends. Ready? Let's go! OceanGate, the company behind the creation of the Titan, has some pretty bold marketing strategies. They're all about offering once-in-a-lifetime experiences, tapping into that adventurous spirit their customers crave. They showcased scientists and explorers praising their innovations and promising an unforgettable and safe journey. Stockhurst, OceanGate's CEO, was on the ill-fated trip to the Titanic and he explained that the Titan's unique design incorporated carbon fiber to increase its buoyancy, a material never used before in a manned submersible. This submarine weighed around 10 tons, could dive up to 4,000 meters, and had a whopping 96 hours of oxygen supply. However, two former OceanGate employees voiced concerns about the Titan's safety. David Locke, who served as the CEO of Maritime Operations between 2016 and 2018, stated in a press release that he was uneasy about the submersible's design and the company's testing methods. Another ex-employee involved with Operations Tech also raised concerns about the hull's thickness and adhesion, as well as the unconventional mix of materials that could jeopardize the Titan's safety after multiple high-pressure dives. It's unclear how many dives the Titan completed, but a company consultant said the five-person submersible took 28 people to the Titanic in 2022. Before diving, OceanGate required customers to sign a waiver stating that their latest submersible hadn't been certified or recognized by any regulatory body. Plus, they warned that the dive could result in emotional trauma disability, physical injuries, or even death. So who were the five brave souls that signed up for this risky trip? Visiting the Titanic isn't for everyone. The voyage costs around 250,000 euros or about 1.3 million Brazilian reais. Alongside Stockton Rush, OceanGate's CEO, Hamish Harding, was on board, a British businessman and adventure lover living in the UAE. He owns a company that trades aircraft, and at 58, Hamish has journeyed to the planet's deepest reaches, even venturing into outer space and breaking aviation records. Adventurer and 77-year-old pilot and diver Paul Rainey was also on the trip. Paul was present during the first dive to recover Titanic artifacts, and is considered a foremost expert on the topic. Pakistani businessman Shazdan Sulaiman and his son Daudan were on board too. Shazdan serves as a curator for the SETI Institute, a research organization in California, while his son is the vice president of one of Pakistan's largest conglomerates, Angro Corporation, which has investments in various sectors like fertilizers, vehicle manufacturing, energy, and technology. Back in 2021, Mexican YouTuber Alan Estrada tried to visit the Titanic wreckage with OceanGate using the same Titan submersible. However, a technical glitch right at the beginning forced the trip to be delayed by a year. Alan said at the time that the risks were worth it to visit the Titanic's remains. So, did he change his mind after all? Let's try to figure out what went down on this fateful Titanic expedition. On June 16th, 2023, the Polar Price vessel set sail from the coast of Canada, headed towards the Titanic wreckage in the North Atlantic. A couple days later, the five peeps on the Titan crew hop in the sub and start going down 3,800 meters to where the Titanic's at. About one hour and 45 minutes in, they lose touch with the folks up top. Their subs got a stash of oxygen that had last them 96 hours in case things go south.
On June 19th, bright and early, the American Coast Guard chimes in for the first time, saying they're on the lookout for a lost sub in the area. Around 12H30, Ocean Gate pops up and swears they're getting their act together to rescue their Titan crewmates. June 20th, two days post-Titanic visit, U.S. and Canadian bigwigs join forces with peeps from other countries' boats, like France and Norway, who claim they're going to pitch in and help out too. June 21st, we're down to about 24 hours before the sub's O2's all used up. U.S. news sites say search teams heard some banging noises around the search area. Four days go by, and on Thursday morning, they figure the Titan's oxygen's run out by now. In the early afternoon, the U.S. Coast Guard says they found bits of the Titan, which match up with a big old implosion inside the pressure chamber, all up in the search zone. But wasn't this disaster kind of a given? Didn't those crew members hear the sub going all creaky and weird? So there wasn't any warning about the huge explosion? You'd think the crew would have heard some weird noises in the hull, right? Or maybe the commander tried to get to the surface as quickly as possible. But it seems like they didn't see, feel, or even know what was happening. At a depth of 2,500 to 3,000 meters where the Titan is thought to have imploded, a hull like that would collapse at a crazy fast speed. Imagine being in a mini-sub and the walls crush you at over 2,000 kilometers per hour. That's because the pressure on the hull is around 2,595,000 tons per square meter. The implosion happened in like 2 or 3 milliseconds. Guys, our brains take 200 to 300 milliseconds to react in intense situations. The Titan implosion was like 100 times quicker. So the crew prop didn't even notice or feel a thing. Would you guys ever go on a trip like that? Let us know in the comments. But first, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click subscribe, give us a like, and share with your friends. James Cameron, the director of the 1997 Titanic movie, first visited the wreck site in 1995 and has gone back 33 times to make more documentaries. In an interview with ABC News, he called out Ocean Gate for not listening to the warnings about their submersible's risky design. The tourist company had been warned in 2019 that their boarding didn't meet safety requirements. Ocean Gate's Titan submersible didn't even have GPS, and its controls were like an elevator going up and down. People are fascinated by the Titanic wreck, some even risk a closer look. We've got a bunch of cool videos about the Titanic on our channel, complete with animations and computer graphics. We're working on a new animation simulating the Titanic rescue, but while you wait, check out our other videos. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, share with your friends, and hit that like button. Thanks everyone. That's all for now. Catch you in our next video. Bye.